Namaste. So now we're going to continue with Kaivalya Navanitam, the difference between the body and the self. Son, he who has forgotten his true nature is alternately born and dies, turning round and round in the unceasing wheel of time, like a feather caught up in a whirlwind, until he realizes the true nature of the self. If he comes to see the individual self and its substratum, the over-self, then he becomes the substratum, that is, Brahman, and escapes rebirths. Should you know yourself, no harm will befall you. As you asked, I have told you this. So he is responding to the student's question. Please tell me how to get free from birth and death. And it's easy to say, well, just realize Brahman. Huh? Nothing to it. <laughs> but for those who are embodied and for those who are bewildered by the body and the mind, this is very, very difficult. So the first step in authentic self-realization, first, is to acquire sufficient punya, sufficient pious karmic credits, so that one can even ask these questions. Otherwise, it's not possible to see beyond the coverings of the body and the mind. Technically, this is called the Brahma Granti. The Brahma Granti is situated between the third and fourth chakras in the area of the solar plexus. And this is where the idea, I am the body, resides. This identification with the body and later on with the mind has to be broken. Otherwise, one remains in the wheel of samsara without any escape. It's not possible. Why? <laughs> because you think you are this, this bag of meat and bones, <laughs> this animal. So as long as you think like an animal, you are an animal. And so he describes helplessly, like a feather in a whirlwind. See, this is how strong the samsara is. This is how strong karma is. And I like to use a simile uh, for those who are really into the body and all that. Let's suppose I come to you with a, an investment plan. Huh? This is a great investment plan. Every day or every week or whenever you get paid, you put money into this investment plan and it earns interest. But at any time, the interest can, dis can be taken out and disappear. And also, at any time, your account can be closed and you lose all your money. Now, isn't that a great investment plan? <laughs> but even though it's obvious when, it, when we talk about it in terms of money, when we talk about it in terms of the body, it's very difficult for people to understand why they are investing so much energy and time in the care of the body when the body is going to disappear. The body is going to die. There's absolutely no doubt about it. So why should we invest in it? Uh, give it the minimum care, yes, required for a good life but not the extravagant amount of intention and attention and investment that people put into the body. So if you look into why people do this, it's always because of sex, 
Huh? Some social motivation is there to look good. You know, but looks are just on the surface. And we see all these really good looking people having temporary affairs, painful emotional experiences, breaking up and then going on to the next one as if nothing happened, not getting the message, not learning the lessons, huh? just round and round on the, on the merry-go-round of life. And this is equivalent to the interest in your investment account just disappearing. Huh? You see, I'll tell you a story. In high school, I had a good friend, a girl who was a very talented singer. And in fact, we played Porgy and Bess in the senior musical. I was Porgy and she was Bess. So we were close, not very close because she had a boyfriend. She was the most popular girl in school. We won the most popular award in the yearbook and all that. And she married the star quarterback, uh, the all-state football team star quarterback. Wow, great, right? This is social success in terms of high school. But guess what? When high school is over, everybody goes away to college, and there they are, stuck in the same old town, kids on the way, huh? and that's the last I saw of them. I moved to California and all of this. And then years later, I came back from India and I happened to be in my hometown. And so I looked her up. And so she tells me the whole sad tale. She, now she's got two kids, she's on welfare, she's divorced because they got stuck in a low income situation. The guy was, was pumping gas, you know, making minimum wage and they started fighting and they got divorced and blah, blah, blah. You know the story. Huh? So this is what happens when people become attached to social prestige, huh? beautiful body, romance, and all these things which can evaporate in a moment. And the same thing will happen with the body. The body is like a dream. While it's there, it seems real. But then one day we're gonna wake up from the dream and the body will be finished. So then what? That's what this spiritual life is all about. The then what? Huh? I'll tell you another story. Well, no, first I'm gonna read the next verse. Lord, can there be anyone in the world who are ignorant of the self? How then are they all caught up in the cycle of births and deaths? Tell me the unerring truth, for I beseech you in full faith. Master, only he is self-realized who knows what is the body and who is embodied. So everybody knows the self, right? Are you? Do you exist? Ramana Maharshi used to put people on the spot this way. They would come to him with, you know, so-called erudite questions on self-realization. And he would say, he questioned them in return. He would say, well, are you? Do you exist? Are you real? And they would say, well, of course I'm real. And then he would say, how do you know? How do you know that you exist? And usually they would reply with something about, they can see the world. Yes, you can see the world, very good. But who is seeing? Who are you? Yes, there's the world, there's the body, there's the senses, there's the mind. But who is the seer? So people in ordinary state of consciousness cannot understand even this question. And now, there's, now it's time for the story. <laughs> One time I was invited to this uh, so-called spiritual community way out in the country in Norway. Uh, this very nice house in the country with several cabins and all of this, and there would be yoga retreats, right? 
Great, I thought, okay, I can stay here for the summer and teach. No. <laughs> because these people were so much invested in the body that as soon as they saw me, huh, because this body is a kapha, uh, according to Ayurveda, and kapha bodies tend to have a few extra pounds. Big deal, right? I'm healthy as a horse, <laughs> even at my age. But no, they didn't like the way I looked. It didn't meet their standard of physical appearance. And so they didn't believe anything I said. This is so crazy, huh? I had just come from, I don't know, three years retreat in Sri Lanka in a mountain monastery in a, a stone cottage, high up with this amazing view of the whole southern part of the island. You know, I could see 150 miles from my cabin. And it was the greatest place to meditate. And I stayed there for three years. And I had been studying with uh, Nyanananda Bhikkhu, who is one of the greatest authorities on Nirvana, Nibbana. So I had been doing this video series on Nibbana, uh, according to the Buddha's teaching. And they could not understand anything, nothing, huh? Because they had this conviction that I am the body. And on top of that, they had invested so much. Huh? They were bringing teachers in from UK and different countries. And, and they brought some Tantra guy from those islands in the south of Thailand, where there's so much drugs and all this stuff. And he just talked about sex. He didn't know a damn thing about Tantra. <laughs> And I pointed this out. I asked him, can you quote anything from the Tantra scriptures? No, not a word. But sex this and sex that. And they were all like, ooh. But they knew nothing really about spiritual life. And they discounted my teaching because they didn't like the way I looked. I wasn't pretty enough for them. Huh? So this to me is idiocy. This is a complete misunderstanding. Uh, of course, if you denigrate, criticize, and uh, offend a realized being, then the door to self-realization shuts, slams in your face. Uh, so that's why the guru here says, only he is self-realized who knows what is the body and what is the self. What is the body? Well, it's an animal. <laughs> it's a mammal. Yeah, it has a nice uh, set of senses and this and that, you know, but it's basically just a meat machine. So this body has one purpose, this human body has exactly one purpose as given in the Vedas, which is to serve as a vehicle for self-realization. That's its purpose, as declared by its creator through the Vedas. So if the body is for self-realization, then why are you sitting around doing exercises and why are you going out and having these temporary painful sex relationships and all this nonsense and working so hard just to get money huh, for the convenience of your body? I mean, look, I know what it is to be in shape. I've done it several times in my life. I know how much work is involved, especially for someone with my physiology, Kappa. And it's just not worth the effort. <laughs> I can remain in good health simply by taking walks. There's no need to go to the gym or do these elaborate asanas and all this stuff. As long as I can sit comfortably and meditate, I'm happy. What else do I need? But no, people get into this whole elaborate fetish about having a beautiful body. And so they waste immense amounts of time and energy 
And then because they have this mindset that I am the body, they cannot understand that the body is simply a shell, one of five shells, actually. Uh, Panchakosha. So we've talked about this in so many videos. I'm not going to give it again. Anyway, I'm out of time. So we'll continue next time with the Guru's further explanations of the difference between the body and the self. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.